Hello, uh, here we're going to look at the clinical manifestations of breast disease and I'm going to focus mainly on the local manifestations. So um, let's look at five main clinical presentations. The first of which is pain and of course if there's pain we must always consider an inflammatory or infectious etiology such as in mastitis or uh, breast abscess. It's helpful to look at the clinical uh, scenario as well because these patients are usually younger and uh, they may be in the lactational period breastfeeding. Now the next main symptom will be skin changes. So any abnormalities that are noticed in the skin can signify underlying disease. For example, if there is redness or warmth in the skin, this again um, can be associated with inflammatory or infectious conditions. But uh, we must also always bear in mind or keep in the back of our minds the possibility of an inflammatory carcinoma. Now this is a clinical diagnosis. It is not made on histopathologic examination, so it's not a histologic variant. What happens is that this uh, is usually a locally advanced cancer where the cancer infiltrates into the lymphatics, hence giving rise to this redness and warmth in the skin of the breast. And um, some clues clinically are that these patients are usually slightly in the older age group, middle aged or older. They are not lactating and uh, these patients may have already been treated with antibiotics but they've been found to be unhelpful. Right, um, the next important skin change to look out for, which is a very worrying sign, is shown in this picture. And this is what we call peau d'orange, or the skin of the orange appearance. You can see that it looks kind of like pitted, like uh, the appearance of an orange peel. And similar to inflammatory carcinoma, this is often due to tumor cells infiltrating the dermal lymphatics. So this is a very worrying sign, it's an ominous sign, and again it is a sign of locally advanced breast cancer. So this is peau d'orange and usually signifying um, lymphatic invasion. So these two, remember important signs. I mean, most of the time, redness and warmth will point to an inflammatory cause, but bear this in mind, especially with these clinical clues. Uh, the third feature is puckering of the skin or some sort of irregularity of the skin surface. Again, this is an ominous sign and it may be due to underlying carcinoma, which is involving the dermis or even potentially the epidermis. Now, um, it's important to also bear in mind that there is a benign lesion, fat necrosis, benign condition, and this may be post-traumatic. It sometimes can also give rise to overlying skin changes and mimic uh, carcinoma. So this is a benign entity that mimics malignancy. Now uh, the next big category of clinical abnormalities would be of course changes in the nipple. For example, there can be nipple discharge. So bear in mind that nipple discharge can actually be physiologic, particularly if it is bilateral, uh, it may be related to the menstrual cycle, and um, if it's minimal, just a very small amount, and particularly also if it's associated with manipulation, such as examination of the breast. Now when do we start worrying about abnormal uh, nipple discharge, if it's unilateral, more likely, um, spontaneous, so not due to any form of manipulation. And also we look at the nature of the discharge. If uh, the patient is not lactating, <clears throat> meaning the patient is not breastfeed, uh, during the breastfeeding period, if there is milk discharge, we call this galactoria. And this is abnormal. It usually is a result of increased prolactin levels, which may be signifying a pituitary abnormality, such as a pituitary adenoma. If the discharge is bloody or serosanguineous, sort of watery, mixed up with a little blood, it could be due to neoplasms and uh, not always malignant. Certainly, it could be due to benign tumors such as large duct papillomas. It could, of course, also be sometimes associated with uh, malignancy uh, carcinoma. Uh, the next nipple change is nipple retraction. And this is when the nipple is normally everted. Um, but then you see that it appears to be become inverted. And this is a worrying sign that is often associated with malignancy. Again, something to remember here, fat necrosis, which is a benign entity, uh, may also give rise to retraction of the nipple. So often these cases require histologic examination um, in order to tell them apart.
So um, yet another nipple abnormality is eczematous changes in the nipple. For example, if there's crusting, crust formation, itchiness, or some oozing, this is a sign of potentially Paget's disease of the nipple or memory Paget's disease. And this is very, very important to pick up because what's happening is actually you have the malignant cells from an underlying breast malignancy crawling through the lactiferous ducts into the epidermis of the nipple. So Paget's disease in the breast is very, very often almost 100% associated with underlying malignancy, whether it is invasive or in situ, and always needs to be investigated. So just uh, some notes on uh, the appearance of the breast. Um, if the patient inspects the breast and finds some change in shape or asymmetry, is a worrying sign and it could mean that there is an underlying mass, for example, due to malignancy. Now the next uh, clinical sign is very, very important and this is breast lump. So the breast may present with a sort of a generalized lumpiness or a discrete lump and they are very different and quite important distinct clinically because of the differential diagnosis. Now if there is a generalized lumpiness it's not so worrying. This may be physiologic, uh, it may be tender and there may be association with the menstrual cycle. Uh, fibrocystic change can also give rise to a generalized lumpiness in the breast. Now we tend to be more worried if the lump is discrete. And etiologically, this could be due to non-neoplastic causes or neoplastic causes. So among the non-neoplastic causes, fibrocystic change can sometimes present as quite a discrete feeling lump. Siliconoma, for example, if the patient has had previous implants and there is a rupture and reaction. Um, and also fat necrosis, again, can present as a very worrying, hard, irregular mass. So fat necrosis can masquerade as malignancy in many ways, skin changes, nipple changes, and also a palpable mass. Now among the neoplastic causes, again, we always have the benign causes as well as the malignancies. So uh, very important to try to clinically tell them apart. Benign masses are usually mobile, they have smooth outlines, they may be fairly firm and a very common example is a fibroadenoma, recall that we call it a breast mouse because it's very mobile and benign phyllodes tumor. So for malignancies on the other hand, the masses, well they're not always fixed but they may be fixed either to the skin or the underlying chest wall and uh, they tend to be harder and more irregular. And of course, we're worried about carcinoma here. Not just carcinoma, but also other malignancies, including malignant phyllodes tumor, malignant stromal tumors, and even possibility of lymphomas. But uh, the number one worry here, of course, is carcinoma, which is the commonest malignancy in the breast. Now, I just want to add on that uh, nowadays with um, breast screening, the patients may actually not be symptomatic, but instead they may come to the doctor with radiologic abnormalities as a result of screening. So they would have a mammogram and the abnormalities would fall into two main groups, abnormal densities as well as calcifications. So familiarize yourself with the um, worrying signs of the radiologic features. I will not cover these here. And of course, we're always worried about invasive carcinoma and DCIS. And again, remember the possibility of the differential diagnosis of fat necrosis, which can present radiologically both with uh, abnormal density looking quite irregular and calcifications. So fat necrosis pretty much is in the differential diagnosis of most of the clinical presentations of the breast. There is a very interesting uh, campaign to educate the public about breast cancer and if you look at this picture here it's called know your lemons um, you can see that they've actually described all sorts of changes and even shown you pictures uh, pictorial examples so if you look at this for example skin sores particularly around the nipple we would worry about Paget's disease uh, redness or heat we worry about mastitis inflammatory conditions and at the back of the mind um, inflammatory carcinoma Nipple discharge also we talked about, dimpling of the skin or, or kind of um, orange skin appearance, worrying about locally advanced cancer. And you can slowly go through this yourself and try to figure out what are the possible underlying causes.